This exhibition will take you on an unexpected but exciting journey through the convent of San Marco in Florence. Built originally in the 12th century and remodelled in the 15th century, you'll find yourself immersed in Fra Angelico's beautiful frescoes which decorate these walls. Whether you find yourself standing in one of the cells on the upper floor or in the chapter house downstairs, we invite you to step into the year 1395 when Fra Angelico's adventure started in a small house in Vecchio, Tuscany. You'd think that because the Dominicans settled in Italy, that was where they originated. But it was actually in France in the very early 13th century when Saint Dominic, who was actually a Spanish priest, confusingly, founded the Dominican order. They branched from the Catholic Church and rather interestingly, they were previously called the Order of Preachers for the reason that they would travel around teaching or preaching their faith to others. Not only were they called the Order of Preachers, but they were also known as Hounds of the Lord as they barked out the message of the Bible. They're a Mendacan order who chose to live very simply, traveling and in poverty, preaching in urban towns and cities, mostly to poorer people. Saint Dominic taught the monks that follow him to preach and contemplate the spiritual whilst also studying, praying and practicing meditation. Despite his fame, not much is actually known about Fra Angelico's early life. However, we do know that he spent a lot of his early childhood in Maguello, Florence. One of the only things you'll hear about his parents was that they baptised their son as Guido di Pietro, which is completely different to the famous name of Fra Angelico that you know today. His name is proven in an early document which is dated back to October 17th in 1417 and describes how Angelico joined the Carmelite order. Angelico was already a painter by the time he joined the Carmelites, which is known from the payment receipts for the work he had done for the church of Santo Stefano del Ponte. Although he was only identified as a friar in 1423, and this would seem to be the point when he took the name Fra Giovanni, when he switched from the Carmelites to the Dominican order. It was very common for men to put Fra in their name to identify them as a friar, and very interestingly, it originates from the Latin word for brother, frater. This is where the Fra Angelico you recognise today started to emerge. During his time with the Dominicans, Angelico travelled many places, including Siena, where he was taught by the painter Lorenzo Monaco and also trained with the master Veraccio in Milan. Though, in 1436, his travels eventually came to a halt in the San Marco convent in Florence. By this point, his art was extremely well known and he'd caught the attention of the great Cosimo de' Medici, also referred to as Cosimo the Elder, who you'll soon find out was the very first of the Medici family who managed to successfully rule Florence, but more about him later. Whilst working alongside the famous architect Michelozzo, who redesigned the convent you're walking around, Fra Angelico was painting the scenes of Christ's life. He was commissioned by the Medicis to paint over 50 images throughout this building, most of which reside in the 37 cells on the upper floor, though many of the images can also be found in the refectories, library, chapter house and cloister. Something you may not have known was that Cosimo the Elder had asked for his very own cell, which was to be built next to the other friars' cells where he could go to withdraw from his busy days. You'll see his cell later in the tour. Angelica and his assistants, including Benozzo Gazzoli, were tasked to create simplistic but meaningful scenes that reflected the monastic life the monks led. The frescoes in these cells were extremely plain and included little to no decoration. He painted them this way to remove any distractions from the monks who viewed them, as they were meant to focus and reflect upon Christ's life, rather than a decorative background. The cell you just walked into contains arguably one of the most famous frescoes of the convent. Nolimi Tanger consists of Christ exiting the tomb after he's been resurrected, with blood dripping from his hands and feet where he'd been nailed to the cross. Where the blood falls on the ground, small red flowers grow from the earth, reflecting the Bible when Christ sows his sinless blood into the earth. Even the number of flowers are symbolic. 
For example, three flowers are representative of the Holy Trinity, and six flowers reflect the six days of creation. For the monks of San Marco, these subtle hints of symbolism help focus their minds when praying, but were not so overbearing that it was confl conflicting with their monastic lifestyle. In the background of Noli Me Tangere, which translates to Touch Me Not, a garden can be seen full of trees, such as a palm tree, a symbol of martyrdom and sacrifice, and evergreen trees, which are representative of everlasting life. Together with the trees in the background, Angelico very clearly hides the symbolic imagery of the Garden of Eden in plain sight, but only making it accessible for the more educated. Though the story of the scene is still very clear to those whose eyes miss the symbols within, people like you and I. All of these very subtle symbols can easily be overlooked, but remember that the whole purpose of the symbolism was to create a language that was accessible to both the educated and uneducated alike. However, there are some very obvious symbols in Noli Mi Tangier, such as the golden halos around both of their heads, identifying both Christ and Mary Magdalene as saints, which are much easier to understand, even for you and I today. In the third cell on this tour, you can see Angelico's Annunciation, which has been labelled plain over the years. However, through the intense symbolism, it is anything but. One of the parts of this scene that strikes as unusual is the Virgin who is without her normal boob cloak. But in the context of where it is painted next to a window in one of the convent cells and is at the foot of a bed, it has a very different meaning. The monk staying in the cell would wake up every day, choosing to either look out the window at the world outside or look at the fresco and contemplate Mary's very difficult decision to accept or deny the angel's offer, choosing whether to let herself become wrapped in the divine. In case the monk viewing the fresco had missed the symbolism that a Dominican monk has to make a choice each morning, St Peter the Martyr is in the shadows, observing and reflecting upon the scene making his decision, just like the Virgin. To the more educated, one can see that he is standing upon a green rug, which is symbolic of the creation of the world and therefore God's choices when making everything. In the 15th century, the Bible still hadn't been translated into English, so up until the year 1526, only the educated could read it meaning that if you weren't taught to read Latin, you just had to blindly believe what priests and preachers told you and would have to use images to learn and dedicate your prayers to. Many of these images would have been in churches as altarpieces or smaller images in private homes. The use of such images was incredibly popular and artists of the time were commissioned to paint them. For the Dominican monks, however, the paintings were not supposed to be full of glamour and gold, as their purpose was to provide a focus for prayer and were a means of reflection so they could reflect their vows of poverty. Each of the frescoes in the cells, or bedrooms as you would commonly call them today, of San Marco are painted on the wall opposite the door, because the door to the physical is on one side of the room and the door to the spiritual is on the other. There are nearly 50 frescoes painted by Angelica and his assistants in San Marco, all of which tell Christ's life story. To a general member of society, maybe including you, these frescoes seem quite plain and very simple, but to a religiously educated monk, these paintings are absolutely buzzing with symbolism and meaning, such as Angelico's transfiguration in cell six or his mocking of Christ in cell seven. So many of his paintings have incredibly rich symbolism, like the presence of certain saints which mean different things. This especially can be seen in cell 9 in the Coronation of the Virgin, where six saints kneel below the scene of Christ crowning his mother. Do you think you can tell which one is which? You can see St Benedict, second in from the left, St Dominic in the middle on the left hand side, and St Francis in the middle on the right, who were all the founders of their respective orders, the Benedictine, Dominican and Franciscan orders. St Peter and St Mark are on the far right have been included for their importance in the Bible story, whilst St Thomas Aquinas has been pictured kneeling on the far left for his involvement in philosophy and religion. 
In John Pope Hennessy's book on Fra Angelico, he states that the frescoes were designed as aids to meditation, not as decoration, and were intended to secure for the mysteries they described a place in the forefront of the friar's mind by Keith keeping them constantly before his eyes. They were meant to encourage the monks to turn their backs on the temptations of the world, the window, and instead to focus on the teaching and stories the, te- the frescoes present. And what more could Angelico have done than placing a fresco so that it was the last thing the monk would see before he went to sleep and the first thing he saw when he woke? These positions of prayer and reflection are supposed to be recognised by the monks and copied when they themselves are praying. As you have moved around the corner to the cells 15 to 21, you'll notice that the frescoes here are nearly all identical. The only difference in these is St Dominic, who is in seven different positions of prayer at the base of the cross. These were the novices' cells, and they are very basic and similar, as they were intended to show the young monks how to pray. St Dominic, despite being the only character in quite a number of the frescoes that wasn't alive during biblical times, is the founder of the Dominican church. Henceforth, his portrayal in many of the images is meaningful and inspiring to the monks who viewed it. Angelico didn't really try to aim for historical accuracy, but rather images that could be understood and interpreted by those who used them for prayer and for devotion. Angelico was commissioned to paint his frescoes in San Marco by the Dominican Order and Cosimo de' Medici in the early 1400s, and because he was paid to create these images, as well as being a member of the Dominican Church, he painted St Dominic into many of the scenes because of his importance in their branch of the Christian faith. The San Marco Library, which Cosimo de' Medici asked for specifically, holds religious and secular books alike that were purposefully chosen not for a specific person, but for general usage. The Italian Renaissance humanist Niccolò de' Nicolai created a number of manuscripts and texts throughout his lifetime, often including religious and humanistic themes, which he asked to be placed in the San Marco Library. He had many terms on how they would be stored, including that his numerous works be put in a public library so that his manuscripts were available to monks and any interested members of the general public. With around six primary schools and four high schools, 10,600 pupils combined, it was becoming common for the general public to be educated, even some girls. Niccolo also demanded that his works could not be removed from the library and there would always be 12 trustees who would look after his collection of around 300 manuscripts. Opposite to the library, you should see Fra Angelico's personal cell, which he stayed in for a number of years. The great Cosimo and Lorenzo de' Medici were the two who made the Medici name famous and one of wealth. You are now standing in the cell of Cosimo, who was the brother who truly led the Medici family to fame, as he made a name for himself in the world of politics. His position on the board of war led him into the debacle of being arrested in 1433, but his exile only lasted until the next year, when he returned from Venice after the Florentine government had complained that all of his high-status friends with lots of money had followed him to Venice. In simple terms, the government of Florence were upset and quite jealous that Cosimo and his friends had taken all the money out of Florence and moved into Venice. On his return to Florence, Cosimo was reinstated with a newfound determination to influence the Florentine government and push out the deep-set favouritism in the circle of leadership. Cosimo the Elder was also well known for his love of art, especially to enrich and decorate Florence, in his favour of course, as a patron of Renaissance art. It was during this time that the cunning Cosimo de' Medici realised that true power and status lay within the church, and so upon seeing the rundown convent of San Marco at the Dominican order, he commissioned his favourite architect, Michelozzo, to design and rebuild the convent. Now, having toured the upstairs, you should find yourself standing inside the San Marco church, where you'll see the famous altarpiece. With Michelozzo in charge of the rebuild, Fra Angelico was commissioned by Cosmo to redecorate, so to speak, all of his paintings depicting Christ's life. 
Many of the images included Dominican monks upon Cosmo's instructions, and quite cheekily, a fair few also depicted members of the Medici family amongst the religious characters. The altarpiece at the front of the church, for example, has St. Cosimus and St. Damien, who Cosimo was named after at birth. Back in the day, the Medici sponsored the Festa Magi, also known as the Festival of the Magi, which celebrates the journey of the three wise men going to the stable in Bethlehem. It consisted of a very long procession through Florence, which ended here at this altarpiece and included an extravagant service. People would kneel in front of this altarpiece and would become part of the painting, so to speak. When kneeling in front of this, the viewer is praying to Christ and the Virgin, like St. Cosmas and St. Damien are in the front row. The people of Florence would worship and pray, and the Medicis used this as a political movement to try and win over the city. Having now walked through the ancient halls of the San Marco convent, do you feel that a small part of history has touched you? We hope that Fra Angelico's journey really resonated with you and that perhaps you'll want to go and learn more about the Medici family. Hopefully you've enjoyed this snapshot of history and you've learned something new today whilst braving the ghosts of past monks and scholars. We invite you to the gift shop and cafe on your way out in the cloister of St. Domenico.